or is it a sacred document? It's certainly not sacred. All right, let's start <laughs> there. The Constitution is kind of trash. The incredible Ali Mistal educated the view and pissed off a bunch of conservatives in the process. And I have a couple of clips. So this was a fantastic appearance from Ali Mistal. This is somebody who, in case you don't know, he's a Harvard-educated constitutional scholar. He writes for The Nation. He is one of these few individuals who are actually invited on to mainstream outlets. So he's actually occasionally brought on to, you know, MSNBC. He's brought on to The View here. Oftentimes, you don't get actual left-wing perspectives on these networks, but here is an actual left-wing perspective educating people, pissing off conservatives in the process. And it's wonderful to see. So this is uh, the first clip. And this is him discussing what Biden should have said during his State of the Union address. Like one, I would have made a one-to-one -one connection between the authoritarians that were fighting in Europe and the authoritarians that were fighting in Washington, yes. D.C. Like you figure the insurrection caucus literally heckled him. And I wouldn't have gone out like that. They would have heckled me. I would have come right back at them yeah. with their, with, with, I don't see how you get through the entire State of the Union without mentioning the attack on our capital. So why do you think he didn't? He's trying to be nice. This is why people elected Biden, right? He's trying to be nice. He's trying to be, he has comedy. He wants pre to bring people together. Yeah. And so that's why he did it. But that really, I think, goes wrong when we talk about the other big missed opportunity, which was Mr. Fun the Police. Now, uh, look, can we just talk as adults? Mm. Does anybody in good faith think that the problem with police brutality in this country is that the police aren't funded enough? No. Right? Do we think that there's a cop on the street saying, like, you know, I... I was gonna let that black man live, but I just didn't have the funding and the training <laughs> to understand what humans look like. If only I had gotten a raise, that black man might have lived. Like, that's not what's happening, all right? <laughs> so when Biden says, fund the police, fund them, fund them, fund them, what I hear is, I don't care anymore, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Yeah. That his commitment to police reform, he's done with it. We can yeah. debate whether or not that's a so, wise so wait, political strategy. I have to push back a little bit. I mean, you don't think that when he says we're not going to defund the police, that he just wants to get the Republicans all this off his back? But that's what I'm saying. We can debate whether or not it's a wise political strategy because of the Republicans yeah. and mm -hmm. what they've done I'm to using the that uh, right. <laughs> but what we cannot debate is that it's a politically courageous strategy. Mm -hmm. But Ali, I, th I think what he was pushed to me, what he was pushing back on was the slogan. That's because what I, I think yeah. the slogan has been misunderstood. It lends itself to misperception and it's got to be. So get rid of the, uh, the slogan so we can have an actual policy re debate on reform and where to put the funding, right? But you're always talking about funding um, mental health respondents and, yeah, and having that be part and... of police response. She but... should have said that then. <laughs> right? Like he's, he's the president making the State of the yeah. Union address about his policy. How is he going to do the whole speech about his slogans and not tell me what the actual policy is? Yeah. Hey, we're going to fund the police with so we can do this or that or the other thing. He doesn't say that. He just yeah. wanted that soundbite, fund the police, fund them, fund them, to yeah. get Republicans well, off his, off his back. Right. Which, again, politically, we can debate whether or not that's wise. The man is at 66% with black supporters in this country. Let me tell you, that is an unsustainable number for a Democrat. That's right. He won with 87% of the black vote. He has 66% of it now. Tell me, please, the black voter that he won with that speech last night. He I'd did. like to meet him. I got my hair shaped up yesterday, just, yeah. for, just for you guys. There wasn't nobody in the shop talking about, you know, No. I had gone off Biden, but now that he's funding the police, I'm back on board. Yeah. That was not the conversation we had. Okay. So. It, was, it certainly right. wasn't politically smart for the black community. All right. So when I say he pisses off conservatives, I also mean conservative Democrats, because he is, of course, as you see there, openly critical of Joe Biden and what he didn't say during the State of the Union. And I think he is exactly on point here, starting with the insurrection. It really is amazing that he didn't mention this at all <laughs> during the speech. I mean, can you imagine if the opposite happened under Trump that, I don't know, Democrats stormed the Capitol for some reason? <laughs> Do you really think Trump I mean, he would be he would have been talking about it every single goddamn day and they wouldn't criticize him for it. They won't say, oh, why isn't Trump trying to bring these two sides together? Why is not he trying to reach out to Democrats? Yet Biden, if he is even a little critical of Republicans, it's oh, he's being so divisive. He should be trying to reach out to the other side. Notice how conservatives are always the ones framing the message for themselves and Democrats fall into their crap. So it's important to be to, to question that. And also, I mean. The idea of trying to appeal or trying to be, you know, uh, uh, conciliatory to, to, to conservatives when McConnell said when Biden got in, says he's 100 percent focused on stopping the Biden administration. So 
Why try to be nice to these people when they are, and he didn't just say this, we have seen this in practice. So why try to be nice to them when they don't care at all? And on the point of defund the police, he's exactly right as well, of course. So this is, you know, apart from the politics of it, I'll get to that in a second. But in terms of the amount of money poured into police budgets, and then, of course, not put into things like education or, or health care is just insane. Now, if you want to say, well, you know, let's divide some of this and put it into mental health services so they respond to some of these calls. Well, that's a different discussion. Yes, that's what defund the police. Ultimately, that's what a lot of the people uh, advocating for that. That's what that means is is reallocating police funds into different areas. This is where we get to the politics of it. If you want to Look, it's one thing to say that the slogan defund the police isn't popular. It doesn't poll well. Sure, it doesn't poll, you know, in a majority. But your job as a leader is to then educate people about what that means and what the actual solutions are. So you can say, sure, defund the police may not sound great to people, but here is what it means. If we reanalyze how we do policing, maybe don't bring a man with a gun to every single situation, maybe we can cut down on the amount of murder that occurs in this country due to these police calls. I mean, there are ways to address this where you are actually educating the people you are talking to, as opposed to, again, falling into a conservative narrative. Now, let's get to the second clip here where he gets on the Constitution, and this really set off conservatives, and I'll get to a couple of reactions showing you that after this clip. Should the Constitution be thrown out? What do we do? Is it a living document? Is it a, or is it a sacred document? It's certainly not sacred, all right? Let's start <laughs> there. The Constitution is kind of trash. Now, let's just, again, let's just talk as adults for a second. What did you say? It's what? It's kind of trash. Trash. It was, it was written by slavers and colonists and white people who were willing to make deals with slavers and colonists. They didn't ask anybody to look like me what they thought about the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Like, how about popular election for the, for, for the president? Mm -hmm. um, People vote, not land. That's not even in there, is it? I'm saying yeah, that's 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 if I was rewriting right it, right, we could right. do it in a tweet, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? um, term limits right. for Supreme Court justices. And right. how about no states' rights when it comes to health care, elections, policing, and guns? Right. right. It's just better. The Constitution is kind of trash. <laughs> it's a quote I don't think I have heard ever uttered on any other television show in my life. But here you have Ellie Mistal saying this, and he is kind of right. So conservatives, of course, got very pissed off by this. I mean, the, the Constitution was trending on Twitter after this. I'll show you just a couple examples and his, his uh, responses to those. But look, this is something that I have noticed as an outsider, as a Canadian. This weird obsession with the Constitution and the Founding Fathers, as if they were sent down by God, and not just things that happened and people that existed and maybe this document should be changed and updated for today on a regular basis. I know there's, you know, a whole process for amendments, but it's incredibly convoluted. It's hard to get anything actually changed. It's just not applicable to today. And, you know, he brings up a couple of points there. He mentioned some others as I'll, as I'll bring up here as well. But it's just, it's, you have to be able to divide your, like, divorce yourself from this idea that this document or these people were some holy beings. They were not. They existed, a thing happened, and now maybe you should change that thing because it no longer applies to today. And this triggers conservatives because they can't even imagine, even though they have their own hypocrisies when it comes to applying these laws. But anyways, let me get to some reactions here. So Matt Schlapp, just the, one of the most enjoyable last names to say, Schlapp, Matt Schlapp. <laughs> Matt Schlapp tweeted out here, uh, Ellie is a desecrator. He does not believe in America's founding or American law. This is dangerous. If this is not an insurrection, what is? <laughs> he actually has the gall to say these comments on a on the view is an insurrection. <laughs> okay. Ali Mistal replied saying, "Unlike Matt Schlapp over here, I do not require belief to understand that things exist. The founding was a thing. Slavery was a thing." The January 6th insurrection led by racist white peoples was a thing. Only bad faith gaslighters like Matt Schlapp get hung up on beliefs of facts. Exactly right. As I said, these are things. We can look at these things and analyze these things as things by looking at them objectively. Other reaction here. Michael Ian Black said, let Ellie 
tweet a new constitution, all caps. He's really pissed off about this. So uh, <laughs> Ellie replies saying, can I start with the declaration? And he doesn't prove it here, as you can see. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, endowed by whatever, with certain unalienable rights, including, but not limited to, life, liberty, education, health care, and a safe and clean habitat. This isn't hard. I'd say this is an improvement. Not hard. Last tweet here. Uh, channeling conservatives here, he says, you can only call the Constitution crap because you live in America. This Again, this idea that only in America can you criticize the government or criticize the constitution <laughs> like have you not read a book or been anywhere else like it's just amazing to me but he replies saying uh meh there are like 30 40 countries where i could do it no problem jamaica france new zealand i assume <laughs> conservatives well move there me wait are you still arguing in favor of free speech yeah so always incredible uh ali mistal needs to have more appearances on these shows like the view is a perfect place for him i think to have this kind of appearance because it's it's a very mainstream audience uh you know yes there's you know some political education there in terms of the the audience but not a lot <laughs> considering it's the view so it's a great place to have you know a, a guest like this F at least at the very as i said at the very least plant some seeds make people think a little differently about these issues. And this is how you really get through to people. So hopefully he has more of these sorts of appearances because I think it does help to allow people to think a little differently about these topics.